Hello again. This is the second talk in a series on how to calculate pi. The first video showed how Archimedes calculated pi using a really simple geometric uh, argument where he uh, inscribed regular polygons inside a circle and circumscribed regular polygons outside a circle and just simply added up the circumference of those two polygons. Well, it worked, but it didn't converge very fast. That means it took a lot of calculations to come up with an accurate approximation to pi. Um, with the development of calculus and Taylor series, uh, there was a whole new range of options opened up for people who wanted to calculate pi. And I'm going to tell you about just two of those. All right. First thing we need to know is if you look at a, uh, some basic trigonometry here, if that angle is theta, and that's, let's see, uh, let's call this y, x, and the hypotenuse right there, we can say things like uh, tangent of theta equals y over x, and sine theta equals y over h. Okay, this is something we all learned pretty early on. If there was a way to make pi show up here somewhere, this might be helpful. Well, there's two possibilities. One is for a 45, it's not a 45, let's see if I can do this here. Okay, let's look at that. If I have a, a right triangle with both uh, the x and y sides being equal to one another, I, know, I already know what the tangent is. That equals 1, no big deal. But we also know there's pi radians in half a circle. So that angle right there is also pi over 4 radians. Okay, we're almost there. We've got pi showing up in this expression, but I need pi to be by itself. So what I can do now is go over here and say that the inverse tangent of 1 is pi over 4, or okay, that's the expression I'm looking for right now. I've got pi on one side of an equal sign and some other stuff over here. So the only problem now is how do I figure that out? Well, here's the deal. There is a simple Taylor series expansion for inverse tangent. Okay? I have a small board here, so I'm going to erase some stuff. Okay, so the game we're trying to play here is if I've got pi on one side and I've got four times this expression here, if I could write out this expression in some simple way, and better yet, if it was a series so it had an infinite number of terms, I could make my approximation as close to, well, there is no exact answer, but I could make it as precise as I wanted just by adding more terms. And so that's how this works. If, uh, I won't go through the whole Taylor series expansion, but here's what you get when you work out the, the uh, whole expression make sure I do this right. Okay, so that's for Okay, there's the expression we get. Now you see this, this goes on forever and it follows a very simple pattern. These are just the prime numbers and the minus and the plus signs just alternate. Okay, sounds pretty good. And it converges to pi. Now it doesn't do it very quickly and that's the problem. Oh, I've got some numbers written down here so I'm going to make a quick table where n is the number of terms And I'm going to start writing down values of pi here. So I'm going to go 2, 5, 10, and 20. That's enough here. Okay. This is basically a logarithmic progression. For 2, 
I get 2.667. Well, that's not very good at all. Um, at 5, I get 3.340. Again, that's not great, but you can see it's getting better. At 10, I get 3.042, and at 20, I get 3.092. Well, there's, not, again, not exact, but a fairly precise uh, representation of the numerical value of pi. And you can see this is going to get close eventually. All right? So this works, but it doesn't converge very quickly. It takes a lot of terms for this to get close. In fact, just to go out to the extreme here, if you take 5,000 terms, you get 3.1414. Okay? So that's got one, one, two, three, the first four significant figures are correct, and the fifth one's not, but it's close. Okay, but that took 5,000 terms. That's a lot of handwork if you're doing this by hand. Now, if you're doing this on a calculator or a computer, who cares? Just hit return and that's what you get. But it would be better if you didn't have to do that much work to calculate this. Maybe there's another expression kind of like this that would converge faster. And there is. Let's look at 30 degrees. Okay. Turns out that's 1 and that's 2. The, I'm sorry, that's 2. What we're trying to do here is try to find uh, an angle that have, we can define in terms of pi that has some known trig value. We don't want to have to use pi to calculate pi. That's a circular argument. That doesn't work. But we know that the sine of 30 degrees is 1 half, and we also know that 30 degrees is pi over 6 radians, okay, because there's 180 degrees is pi radians, so 30 degrees must be pi over 6. Okay, so that's what's going on here. Well, let's do the exact same thing we did up here and say that 6 times the inverse sine of 1 half must equal pi. And it does. Okay. If that's true, let me, let me If that's true, then that's got to be true. And there must be a Taylor series expansion for this. And there is. Now it's not nearly as simple as this, but it converges a lot faster. So I'm going to write down the first couple of terms. Now it's not obvious where these terms come from, but you can go look up Taylor series expansion in your math book and or on the web somewhere. Go to Wikipedia. And if you write Taylor series expansion for this equals, okay, 6 times 1 half, but by the way, that already is 3, so a one term expansion is already better than that, plus 1 over 48, plus 3 over 1280, and I got one more here I'll write down plus 5 over 14336. I'll get my head out of your way here in a second. Okay, that's close enough. Right? That converges much, much faster. These terms get small really quickly. And I'll just write these down quickly. Already, that's almost pi. That's two terms. That is about as accurate as that. So two terms with this expression is already almost as accurate as 5,000 terms with that one. Okay, if you go to five terms, you get 3.14158, which is accurate all the way up till that one. That one's off by a little bit. If you go here, you get 3.14159264. Wow.
Okay, so you can see how quickly this converges. By the time you get up to 20 terms, you've got an approximation that's as accurate as you could possibly need. Okay, so I have to stop now. I'm out of time. Next time we'll go a little further.